Welcome back. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to work on the lower half of the fox. So we're going to do its legs and the chest and underbelly and the underneath of the tail. Right now, what I'm doing is taking a thin strip of black roving and I'm wrapping it around the front leg. I'm going to start to emphasize the bend in the foot using the black roving so that it starts to establish where the paw of the fox is and then we'll build up the toes beginning actually underneath with the paw pads and then building the toes up on top of the paw pads. So again this is just going to repeat what we did on the foxes left front leg, wrap the wool, and then felt it in place. And here what I'm doing uh, that's kind of difficult to see is I'm just creating that bend in the, in the leg that separates the, the leg from the paw. Just felting just right above where I want the top of the paw to be. And then I'm just going to keep wrapping the black around the forelegs. It's a little bit difficult to tell because the wool is black, but I'm just tracing out the, the edges of the toes with the needle to just start forming that shape, the separation of the toes. And on this side, I'm just working on the division of you know where the paw is versus the leg, increasing that indentation. And just here, I'm just tightening up the neck. I, I'll probably continue to do that on and off. Now I'm taking this uh, reddish orange roving and I'm, I'm gonna call this the reddish roving, but it is a reddish orange, it's not super red, but this is the, the reddest color that I'm using on the fox. And I'm just gonna wrap it over the black and get it felted in place. So I'm wrapping some more of the reddish roving on the left leg and I'm tacking it in place so that I can pull more tightly and wrap more tightly around the leg.
something to keep in mind when you're felting where the wire is in narrow areas like the legs is if you felt so that the needles are a little bit closer to parallel with the wire, you're less likely to break it than when you're perpendicular, but you can still felt perpendicular. You just need to be really careful and keep in mind that I'm not going nearly as fast as what it looks right now. I'm actually going really slow and I can feel every time the needles hit that wire and I just back off. I'm going to do a lot of just tightening up the wool all around the legs until it's really secure. And here I'm working on the paws again, just establishing the shape of the paws and the bend right at the, the base of the leg where the paw starts. And that again is that section of wool that I have where the wire is not inside the paw, that extra wool that was sort of hanging over. I'm just extending some of the reddish roving a little bit higher up the leg. And it's gonna need a lot of tightening down more shaping of the paw, more tightening up the leg, just getting all that roving eventually really tightened so that you don't see a lot of the striping effect made by wrapping the roving. But we won't see that striping effect in the end because I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay little bits of roving across that actually goes the direction that fur would naturally go. So the real reason that I'm saying to keep felting until that striping isn't really obvious. It's because at that point you know that you have felted it securely enough that there's enough stabs basically all through that that wool. So again, I'm just continuing to really tighten up any of the wool that still looks loose to me, isn't fully felted in place. Here I'm just going to make sure that the black is even on both of the hind feet and needed to come down a little further on the other foot. I'm just tightening up and I am using the black needle here, which is the 36T. It's thicker and it's, it's probably better to use something like that in the areas with wire. If you, if you can. I don't like it as much. I don't feel like it grips the wool quite the same way, but the needle is very strong and it's very less likely to break than the one I'm using right now. But I like this one a lot, so it's up to you. Just be careful and have extra needles. Now I'm taking some gray wool bat. It's kind of a mixture of gray, like a light gray and a dark gray that's already pre-mixed. I'm going to add this to the tops of the foot to sort of indicate where the toes are going to be. So I'm starting to build up the toes. Um, I actually am going to end up covering this with, with black because I decide I don't, you'll see later, I decide I don't really like this color. I think it's a little too light. So I'm going to end up kind of lightly covering it with black to darken it and then just I'll add back a different gray that I have that's a little bit darker. It doesn't have so much white showing through, like a whitish gray. It's a, I guess, more of a charcoal gray that, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be a process of building up this color on the toes. 
so I wouldn't, um, don't stress too much about this part, about getting it to look just like this, but I mean, I would maybe suggest just using a darker gray than what I'm using right now, and maybe you won't have to do quite as many steps. Once I get the tops of the toes sort of marked out with that gray color, I pull my charcoal gray and I'm taking little bits of it and rolling it between my fingers and then, you know, kind of tearing it. It's roving, so I'm kind of making it shorter, making the fiber shorter, kind of tearing it and rolling it and tearing it until I get something that I can kind of shape easier and have it hold its shape and not be just loose fuzzy. And what I'm doing with this charcoal gray is making little little balls that will become the toe pads. So this portion of the video is not sped up at all so that you can see more clearly what I'm doing. I just take a little piece of that roving and I'm kind of just breaking it. And then I'm rolling it, which actually starts the felting process. And then once I have, you know, sort of a little ball, I'm going to hold it in place and then just poke it on there. Set that down and just be really careful so you don't poke yourself. This is a really fiddly portion of the felting process. I'm just kind of tucking along the edges of this little gray ball of wool and working on not only attaching it but kind of leaving a, a puffed up shape. So we'll speed this back up. Here's the other little piece that I had. Just kind of roll it, get that attached and attach another piece on top of the one I was working on we get four little paw pads for the toes. And now I'm going to work on the center part of the paw pad and I'm just working on the very center part right now. And then to really help define not only the shape but the color of the foot between the toes, I'm taking a strip a really tiny strip of black roving and laying it between those middle toes and I'm pushing it down so that it helps create the shape of the toes and also just a visual definition. So now I'm working in between the outer toe and the next middle toe 
just laying down a little strip of black roving that will just create more definition between those two parts of the paw pad. And now on the inner toe, the exact same thing, just a little strip of black roving, tucking it in between those two toes and just pressing down so that it separates the toes more clearly and creates more definition. And these will be the two center toes on the left hind foot. Now I'm making the innermost of the four toes on this paw. And the outer toe. Now I'm working on the center part of the paw pad. And the shape is sort of like a boomerang on the outer portions. It's gonna protrude back further. On the innermost paw, or toe rather, the innermost toe, there's really not enough substance on the top side of this one. So I'm building it up with black roving, thickening it up so that it's got more of a toe built up there. Just taking a little bit more, building it up a little bit thicker all around that particular toe. And I'm just doing the same thing on this side, making sure that the toes are built up enough. And now I'm laying down that thin strip of black roving as a separation between the toes, just to get that definition in between all the little toe pads. Here I'm just refining the shape of the center part of the, the paw pad and I don't know maybe you could think of it kind of like an upside down Mickey Mouse. The center is, is the biggest and then the two edges are a little bit smaller. So you can basically see the shape of the paw pads and that center paw pad kind of boomerang or Mickey Mouse.
Now I'm just going to do the same thing for the front paws, working on one of the center toes, just getting it lined up, the toe pad lined up with the markings that I have for the top part of the toes. So just creating that little toe carefully so that I don't poke myself. I'm just being really careful. And this, this video is actually still sped up right now. This isn't the real speed and it's still fairly slow. I'm, I go very slow on these small areas.
So we'll speed things back up again. And I'm just adding black on the tops of the toes and in between the toes, just building up the toes so that they have enough meat to them. I just built up these toes a little bit more and now I'm putting a strip of black roving between the two middle toes just like on the other ones just defining it and thickening up the toes. Here's where I decide I'm not sure I like the way that this gray is looking, the gray that's on top of the paws. So I'm kind of spreading it a little, just tugging with the needle and then thinning it out. And actually, I do end up putting black over it and it darkens it up, um, but I had pulled it forward so you couldn't see it. Now I just scooted it back so that it's back in view and I'm adding that charcoal gray sort of back in place because I just I put black over all the gray and now I'm adding that charcoal gray so that I have a, a gray that's not quite as intense. The other one was just, there was too much contrast. It was too light. So now I'm just redoing the gray but a little bit darker. Here I'm just tightening up the connection of the left elbow, making sure it stays more snug up against the chest. So I'm just stabbing some of that chest down into the left elbow. And now I am starting to sort of blend the look of the reddish color and the black color on the legs so that it doesn't just have a, a stripe of reddish and then black. I'm just laying some of that reddish roving so that it goes the direction of the fur, which would be, you know, from the top part of the leg toward the bottom, like a vertical rather than a horizontal direction of the, the roving. And this, this takes a little while um, to get this built up and you just kind of keep, keep messing with it. Like you lay some roving on there and then sort of stretch it around. I take the tip of the needle and drag it sometimes to spread the fibers. I'll attach them a little bit and then sort of just drag it, almost like brushing the roving. I'll use the needle, I guess, a little bit like a brush, you know, and get it. So again, I'm gonna tack it up here and then pull it downward and keep tacking it in and if ever it's too 
lumpy or too streaky. You just kind of separate out those fibers with the needle, pull them apart, and then tack them in. You just keep building up and you'll end up with a more blended look to the black and the reddish. Um, and it'll also look a little more fuzzy rather than wrapped so that the roving doesn't look quite so wrapped. Just adding shape to the paws, really making sure it's defined. Adding some more of the red roving. It's difficult to see what I'm doing on that hind leg, but it's the same thing that I'm doing on the front legs. I'm just laying roving and blending it. And right here, this particular left front leg, I just feel like it wasn't really sturdy enough. So I'm reinforcing it. I've wrapped a little more roving and um, I'll probably keep reinforcing this leg a little bit. I, for some reason, just felt like it was weak and it kept wanting to bend really easily. Now I'm just blending, laying little bits of roving, blending, reducing that sharp line between the black and the reddish color. And I'm not doing this just straight across. I don't know if you can see, but there's, I'm trying to create a little bit of a slant so that the inner part of the legs is dark lower and then it sort of slants upward, the reddish color. And I'm just adding some to the back of the leg, some more of this reddish roving. And this part is also going to come down a little bit lower than the outer portion of the foreleg. Do the same thing on this side, just laying some roving in there and felting it in place. Again, here I'm trying to keep the needles, for the most part, more parallel to the wire or off, you know, to the side of center.
So you can kind of see the angle that I want the black to meet up with the red. See how there's like a slight slant? And now what I'm going to do is start really pressing a crease in the inner part of the forelegs. And it is at a, an angle, it's almost parallel to that angle where the black and the red are meeting up on the inside. Um, I'm just tightening this up right now. And now I'm really working on that, that crease that I was talking about. Just there's a muscle on the inside of the leg that you want to be able to see right there. Now I'm actually taking some black, um, a little, a thin amount of black roving because I wanted to just raise that up a little higher, the, the black on the red. And now I'm working on that inner, inner crease again to make it look like there's um, a definition on that muscle. Just keep working on that. A lot of what I'm doing is either just tightening up that wool or working on the blend between the black and the reddish color. I just keep looking at it and seeing if there's anywhere that I feel like isn't blended well enough. I don't want there to look like there's chunks of red laying on the black or vice versa. I want it to look like it blends. So it just takes a lot of sort of fiddling with it and making sure that the little strips of roving are just evenly laid down. Sometimes it feels like you're working with one little piece of fiber at a time, trying to spread them and make sure they're all laying exactly how you want. So now I'm going to work on creating a better definition of the elbow. So going down from the scapula, it's going to slant inward at that same parallel that we built up kind of near the chest. So we're just creating a sort of an inward indentation. And I'll freeze it right here so you can see that angle. This is just more of that reddish roving, and I'm going to start putting fur along the belly. What I do is I lay a strip of roving and felt sort of an invisible line down the center of it. And then I fold over the top half 
and make sure all the fur then is going in the same direction. And now I have this other color that is like a tannish orange. So I'm putting that on the insides of the hind legs right now. And I'm just laying it on kind of the same way that I was blending the reddish color into the black. And this is a white color that I'm putting inside of that tannish color on the inner portions of the hind legs. So what I'm doing now is I'm starting to layer the colors under that reddish color, I put some of the tannish color, and then I'm laying down some of the white color so that it's going to transition from a reddish portion on the belly, kind of to a warm tannish color, and then to that white color. And I'm adding some of the tan now um, to kind of carry down from the inner portion of those hind legs all the way towards the rump of the fox. And this part is underneath, so I'm not applying it really in a way to leave a lot of strands free and looking fluffy, because it is underneath the fox. So this part I'm just, I'm just tacking it all down pretty secure. I let the white lay over the, the tan color so that you see the look of fur, but it's not really sticking out. And this part up here, I'm putting in that tannish color above that little strip of the reddish color and I am leaving it hanging more. Now I'm going to take the tannish with my reddish color and blend them together. Here I'm blending the red color with the tan color and I'm going to use this along the belly of the fox. I'm going to go back to the method where I stitch it down through the center, just through the center of the piece of roving so that the ends both poke out and then just tuck that top portion down so that it goes the same direction so that the fur isn't sticking out all crazy directions so it all goes downward. Here I'm taking the tannish robing and I'm putting it along the inner portion of the knee and the shin. So right along that edge that we want to keep defined. And I'm just doing it on both sides and I'm just kind of laying that color in there. Just tacking it down, I'm not worried as much about um, how much the fur is sticking out there. Just laying in that color. I'm going to go up a little bit higher, all the way to the knee.
And here I'm just carrying over a little bit of that tan color along the side of the belly, just a little bit. Not, not very far up, just kind of near the hindquarters. I'm going to take some white roving and line it along the tan roving that is on the leg. So from the knee down the shin, I'm just going to add some white. This is tan roving that I'm putting in right now, just pure tan. Now I'm blending white with tan and we'll just start moving up the chest gradually lightening the belly. This is just pure white roving. The fox is going to have a white chest and all the way up to the chin will be white. Just adding a little bit more of the tan along the insides of the fox's front legs. And here, even though you can't see it because now, instead of my hand being in the way, the fox's back paws are in the way, um, just doing the exact same thing that I did on the other side. I'm just adding tan to the inner portion of the front legs. I'm using the tan to block out some of the pattern that is going to be along the chest area. So there's going to be patches of white and it'll be divided a little bit across the front of the chest in one spot. So I'm taking the tan just up the length of the front legs and then I'll keep working on that pattern. Here I decide I'm going to add one last patch of blended fur, that's the tan and the white blended together, before we get to the pure white part of the chest. And I'm not folding this one over, I'm just getting the color and the fluffiness just sort of laid down in there. So I'm 
felting all across the top portion of that roving and making sure it's attached well. I'm going to do the same thing with some of the white on top of that layer that's sort of blended just to give it a gradual transition from the tannish colors in the underbelly to the, the white of the chest. This is the spot where there's going to be a little division between the, the white on the sort of belly portion and then onto the chest, but it's very minimal. It's not going to be super noticeable. And I'm going to start laying the pure white right over that and just let it barely show through the tips of the wool, of the white wool in this next section. In this next section, I am going to go ahead and fold over know, uh, felt down the center and then fold over so we start getting a puffy looking chest to this box. I'm just building up more tan along the front legs right now just felting on a little bit more tan along that same line that's already there. It's widening the tan area and then I will add some more of the reddish color, start filling in a little more of the front legs, the upper portion of the front legs. In this next portion, the white extends further out and is kind of over the, the front legs. So you'll see I just kind of am widening out the, the white area. And again, you can see that I'm felting down the center of the little piece of roving and then folding it over so that all the roving is pointing up which is going to be down. All the fur will be going in the same direction and look natural. And then I kind of just am brushing it with the needle and then felting and then brushing and felting, which is pretty much the way I, I treat all the furry wool. I'll just use the needle to drag the fibers into the right direction and then felt them in place. And the red pattern uh, carries inward a little bit over the collarbone area. So I'm just taking the reddish wool and kind of going along that collarbone that I shaped out earlier. And also extending just along the, the leg, continuing the red color down to meet up with where the rest of the leg is.
going to add a little more tan onto the back side of the front legs. Adding a little bit of white onto the white patch that is on the chest here. Then I'm looking at just the overall shape of the white pattern and I decide that on the fox's left side I'm going to extend out that white just a little bit further. So I'm actually laying down the white and kind of crossing over some of that red that I had just laid down, just covering it. I'm going to extend that white just further onto the left, the left shoulder, chest region, widening the overall white shape. I just keep strengthening the position of the head. I'm tugging down wool from in the head, pushing it down into the neck and I'll probably just keep messing with that so that it really becomes locked in place the way that I want the head to be. I'm going to keep layering the white, just cutting off pieces of the roving and then sort of fanning it out so it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to attach across the middle line and then fold it over. Then I'm going to do this all the way up to the chin. I don't really like the way this white fur on the lower portion is looking. It just looks a little scraggly. So I'm just trimming it so that it looks a little more even in length. It doesn't, I don't want it to look like the fox has had a haircut, but I just don't want there to be super long pieces and other pieces that are shorter. So I'm just kind of making it more uniform and then I'm going to use the needle to sort of make sure everything is how I want it. Tack down anything that's sticking out weird or smooth anything that I just want it to look even and, and natural.
I do a lot of just continual modification to the way the felting is coming out. Akira is deciding, eh, there's still a little too much scraggly hairs along the belly, so I was tucking some of those down and just adjusting some of the the way that the texture on the legs was looking. Now I'm getting back to adding in more of the, the fluffy white part of the chest and the neck. I'm going to use this color blend along the lower uh, haunches on the back legs. This is just the same blend of three colors, the tannish with the reddish and the brown.
doing a similar thing here. I just am omitting the tan color now. I moved more into the color that will be all over the, the rump and the back half of the box's back. It should just be the reddish with the brown. I'm going to work on smoothing some of the fur that comes around where the hind legs are. So I'm just kind of brushing upward with the needle and getting that wool to just tuck around. Kind of brush it and then felt it in place and brush it and felt it in place. You can see there are holes in the wool that are obvious right there where we have where I felt it in. And I'm just going to take the needle and just sort of brush across those holes and the fibers will then hide the holes where the needle had stabbed them. Here's just another look at how I kind of felt down an imaginary line down the center. So that divot down the center of the roving just creates that imaginary line and then fold down over it.
just working on that front leg. I'm not adding any wool right now. I'm just continuing to felt the wool that's there and tighten it up and smooth it and make sure that it looks just, I don't know, believable. So I'm, again, I'm just kind of just messing with what's already there. I just keep adjusting things and and then continue working on these hind legs again. This is just the reddish color, just adding it onto the leg. Now I'm going to take some black wool and I'm going to add it to the elbow region. So kind of behind the elbow and then straight across just above the elbow a little sort of a black stripe that I will cover with the red again. And it's just going to be very faintly seen, just kind of gives an, um, a shadowy area. Sometimes I struggle with where to put my hand because I don't want to ever squeeze and hold areas that I want to remain fluffy or areas that could easily be just crushed and messed up. If the wool is meant to look fluffy and you press it too much with your hands, you'll actually over felt it. It'll felt more and it won't be fluffy anymore. So I try, especially in the area like the chest and under the neck, to never hold it by that area and squeeze it. I have my hands on both sides of the shoulder, I'm sorry, my fingers are on both sides of the shoulders right now, but I'm not actually putting pressure on that front part under the neck. And I'm just continuing to add the reddish color that I have on the shoulder region of the fox here. I'm going to take this reddish and tannish mixture and thicken up the area that is kind of outlined along the collarbone. So I'm actually going to lift up some of the white that I've already laid onto the neck, just push it up a little bit and then I can felt some of that color, the tannish color, right underneath it.
I'm adding some of the tan color by itself right along the edge of the white. I'm going to add some black just along the back part of the shoulder blade here and again it's going to create a little bit of shadowing and this first black that I added I'm trimming away some of the reddish so that the black shows through just a little more and I'm just belting this area down a little bit and adjusting the way some of the fibers look. doing a little bit of alternating between the reddish and the tannish color. So I'm laying down one thin little row of tannish and then I'm going to lay down a thin row of the reddish on top of that and alternate for a little bit just to kind of give it a look um, like the fur, uh, like there's an undercoat that's a little bit visible in patches along the, the curvature of its body. This next part of the fox is where there's sort of the fur um, would be sort of spread. I don't know how else to describe it, kind of more puffed out near where the shoulder region is. And so more of the undercoat is going to be visible. So all of these little patches right here I'm putting in right now are the tannish orange. And now I'm going to blend some of that tannish orange with white to start lightening it more and then I will gradually get to a fairly light color that's right up against that shoulder. back on the shoulder portion just adding more of the reddish color right above that dark shadowy area I guess I forgot to turn the camera on, but all of that is the same as what we did on the other side, except I'm about to do something different right here. So I'm using a, a pumpkin orange now, 
um, instead of just the tan, I'm going to add a little bit of pumpkin orange and it's, it's not quite, it's more of a medium orange. It's not as red as the reddish orange. And then I'll do the same thing with the tannish and white blend to have the undercoat showing through right here all the way up to the shoulder and I'm adding some more white, a lighter um, portion of that just so it's really light right up against the shoulder. And then I'm taking some of the reddish and mixing it with brown right here just to make it a little darker um, in that area where there's a little bit of shadow and now this is just the reddish adding some more reddish up on that shoulder. I'm going to take the red color, the reddish color, and start to create um, the illusion of the shoulder blade going back further so it's sort of overlapping right there. And then I put a little bit of the pumpkin on top of the reddish just as sort of a highlight. And right here I'm just barely folding over the tip of it so it's not quite as thick. Just adding some of the reddish on the top of the hind leg right there.
just mixing some more of the reddish with the black and from this portion on, on the underneath of the tail, I'm not going to fold um, the wool over. I won't be creating that center line and folding over and making it fluffy because this part's underneath and um, it's not it's not worth it to try and make it fluffy. It'll just end up being felted down to itself in the end. So we're just going to go with getting the color that looks right and not worry about it being too fuzzy in this portion of the tail on the underneath only. So I have the red by itself, the reddish color that I'm sort of transitioning from where the fox's rump is into the rest of the tail where it's a blend of the black and the red together. And I'm transitioning this reddish into the haunches as well where it's a brown and red blend. Just kind of making sure that all of that tucks around nicely. Any loose fibers that are on the hind legs get wrapped around and smoothed and all of that area is nice and smooth and well felted. And this completes part two. We've got the underbelly and the chest, the underneath of the tail, the feet, all completed. And in part three, we will finish all the top side of the fox, the top part of the tail, the back, and of course the face and the ears. <laughs>